This is Eagle Al, and today I will be talking about Dallas Goddard. He's feeling good. Also, Jalen Hurts should be bench, according to David Carr. Also, we're going to talk about Nick Sirianni and why he's actually filling the team and not Brian Johnson. But let's get straight into it. All right, so before we get into the topics today, I want to talk about Brandon Graham, man. Brandon Graham was on WIP. He said a couple things about the 49ers game. And let's listen to this clip. Game right there, man. It was high emotion. I mean, much credit to them 49ers, man. But I know we're going to be ready when it comes back, uh, come back around. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, more credit to them. I just love giving them their credit because they got us on that day. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm just so happy it wasn't for all the marbles in the playoffs, and, and we got time to make sure we get it right. And so I, I, I'm going to bet on us uh, the next time around, man. Brandon Graham just wrote a check that we got to cash. We run into those dudes again. I'm not sure if it's going to be at Levi's Stadium. Not sure it's going to be at the link. But when we run into them again, we got to smoke their boots and we got to be prepared. Again, we got to smoke their boots and be prepared. Because, look, we coming at the players like we Philly. We don't do the Cowboys, though. Yeah, we're going to bounce back this and that. No, we coming at y'all. Y'all, y'all got y'all. Y'all got stuff to improve, man. Y'all got stuff to improve, and I'm happy they looking in the mirror because, yes, six straight touchdowns it is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. That defense going to have to step up. The offense going to have to step up for sure. And, I, uh, again, I like what Brandon Graham said. I really do. Let's get these dudes back. They got one up on us. They got their lit back. Now we're going to have to get ours back. I don't care where it's at. Going to have to get it back. All right, so let's get into, I guess, the next topic about A.J. Brown a little bit. A.J. Brown had made a post. Look like he's either dissing the Cowboys or the 49ers. He like, look who's guarding me. I'm open. You know, some haters say, oh, he's dissing Jalen Hurts. No, he's not. He's not dissing Jalen Hurts. He diss he's dissing a couple CBs. And I like that he's talking smack now. I feel like A.J. Brown is starting to wake up. Yeah, you could be friends with these dudes during the offseason, but during the season, nah, they enemies. You are midnight green and white. Some days Kelly green. You got to knock these dudes off. D these dudes are not your friends during the season, man. These dudes are not your friends. So I'm happy AJ is speaking his mind. You know, AJ did go over 100 yards. Of course, we're not talking about statistics. I don't really hear any content creators talking about statistics. We want the wins. Jalen Hurst, what, had over 300 yards. We don't care. Smitty had 96 yards. We don't care. We want to win. We're not even using the excuse Dallas Goddard didn't play. I think it's a different game if Dallas Goddard played. We needed some type of physicality. We couldn't wait till Smitty get body slam we need something from that tight end position i'm happy he's coming back but let's get into the real topics in the title in the title so let's talk about the offense man well the defense too let's talk about both so again sean decide disappointed me it's like in the first quarter certain things were working like for example having sydney brown and nicholas murrow out there at the same time Having basically one linebacker and taking Chris Sinellas out the game. This is what happens when Sidney Brown was in. He played limited snaps, right? So Sidney Brown, three straight plays. Run, run away from Brown, run away from Brown, pass away from Brown. Comes out the next play, 20 yard run. And again, Sidney Brown's not that normal safety that can't hit. He can hit. We should have used more of that personnel and the reason why Chris Ellis got carved up and Nicholas Merle. I believe Sidney Brown would have did a better job at least sticking on Christian McCaffrey. Would he locked up Christian McCaffrey? No, but he would have did a better job than Nicholas Merle or Christian Ellis. In my opinion, you know, we went, we tried to go heavy in the box and it didn't work. Just simply didn't work. It should have been majority one linebacker out there and Sidney Brown out there. 
in my opinion. It was that type of game. It's that type of game. And again, Sidney Brown is not one of those dudes that can't hit. He's that bot safety that hits hard and, know, and knows how to hit the gaps. We should have continued working with Sidney Brown. And these statistics I'm about to pull up about the defense just make me want to throw up. It's, it's ugly. Okay, so Elliot Short Parts, we all know he can be negative about the Eagles, but sometimes he's right. 24th and points allowed, 29th and points allowed per drive, 28th and first downs allowed, 32nd on third down defense, 29th and red zone defense, 26th and takeaways, and 12th and sacks. Dallas offense is the first in points. First in points per drive, second on third down offense. Look, man, the defense is terrible. Do I believe Jonathan Gannon would have did any better? No. Is it? You no know, personnel with Sean Desai, some points. But at the end of the day, man, the defense is playing terrible. The numbers are t telling me they're playing terrible. And these numbers are not being manipulated because I see it with my own eyes. It's like when it's third down. I can't rely on my defense, even looking with my eyes like, yeah, we're going to get this stop. I've seen us give up plenty of third downs, plenty. It'd be third and three. We sit seven yards back. We are terrible on third down. We just terrible overall in defense, except getting sacks because that's just talent. 12th is not bad, but that's just strictly off talent. And. Sean Desai, man, you got to do something. The season is on the line. But let's talk about Nick Sirianni, man. Nick Sirianni, he's failing us, man. He is failing the Eagles. So somebody put on Reddit, maybe a silly question. But how involved is Nick Sirianni actually installing the offensive game plans? Play calling strategies. We know he doesn't directly call them. Personnel snaps count choices, etc. Or is it truly mostly Brian Johnson? If you could possibly be able to give a percentage, i.e. 60, 40, or any answer is appreciated. So Philadelphia is OP. So that's basically Dave Spadaro. He said, Nick Sirianni is extremely involved. That's not good. Anybody that watched the Eagles in 2020, that's not good. That's not good at all. This is Nick's offense with his input from the coaching staff. This is Nick's offense from his input from the coaching staff. Look, it didn't work. This is why Shane Stein is doing what he's doing. Brian Johnson might not be a bad play caller, y'all. Brian Johnson might not be a bad play caller. It literally might be Nick Sirianni. Because remember, we go from plays like, Okay, that was a nice play, but why we do that the next play? Something's not right with the play calling between the two. And I think Brian Johnson is being unfairly punished. Whereas though Nick Sirianni make it seem like during the press conference, he called plays here and there. Man, that's not good. Well, let me go ahead and finish reading the rest of this. They put together the game plan during the week and then Brian knows where to go. What better of options to call in certain situations? Not good, y'all. We all know Nate Sirianni, motivator, know how to talk, how to speak, cool with the players, uh, definitely a player's coach. But he's not a good play caller, man. Remember when he had control of the play calling, we was begging him to run the ball. You see what's happening now? We begging the team to run the ball. So Nick Sirianni got on the podium and said, look, I'm handing the play calling off to Shane Steichen. Skyrocket offense. The offense skyrocketed. I'm just keeping it real. He's not a good play caller. We're in trouble. Eagles are in trouble. It's not good. Let me show you a play for an example. Look at this play. Light in the box, he decides to go play action and try to dump it off to Swift. It's, it's, that's not good. That's just not good. Nate Sirianni is not a good play caller. 
He's not. And I guess he want to get his feet wet or he want to be like, look, I can do it. He see the success of Shane Steichen or something. I don't know if it's jealousy. I don't know what it is. Now, he's not a good play caller. And again, maybe we was unfair to Brian Johnson because we did not know this until this came out. Nate Sirianni, bro, give it up. Give it up. Keep it real. You were barely calling plays with the Colts. That was Frank Wright. Let's keep it real. You want to come to the Eagles and call plays? Got to curse. Fuck up. Give it to Shane Steichen. Shane Steichen gets a head coaching job. You think you can do it again, and now you're fucking up again. You have to give it to Brian Johnson. Now, I hate cursing in my videos, but the season is on. Well, we tend to. Home field advantage is on the line. We're going to run it to the San Francisco 40. We, we don't have time for ego tripping. Give the play calling to Brian Johnson. Give it to him. You suck at play calling. He sucks. I'm sorry. He sucks. Give it to Brian Johnson. See what he can do. Man. Oh, I'm ranting a little bit. <laughs> I'm, in, uh, I'm entering my inner Joey shakes right now, but come on, man. Come on. Give it to Brian Johnson. Nick Sirianni should not be calling plays. He's again, barely calling plays for the Colts, but want to call plays for the Eagles to show that he know what he's doing. Again, great motivator. Players coach offense and defense like him. Special teams like him. And shout out to the special teams who I thought was going to have the most problems. And they are the best unit on our team, according to NFL.com. But he's holding the offense back. He's failing us. He is failing us. All right. So let's talk about some positive news, man. Let's, let, let me just get out that segment. Dallas Goddard looked like he will be back. But let me go ahead and play this clip. What are going to play Sunday? Uh, it's been healing really well. And. You know, I'd say it's it's probably feeling like 85, 90, 90 percent of the way there. Mm -hmm. um, feeling really good back to normal. So really happy with where it's at. And, you know, you have a surgery like that and uh, it could be a while before it's 100 percent. But uh, it's really close and I'm able to do everything I need to do in my position group. So, um, you know, I'm planning on going down to Dallas and uh, playing every snap that uh, they allow me to. You know, hopefully I don't have a, a limit on my snaps. I know when I came back last year, I did. not so hopefully it's kind of the same thing. And. Uh, just get back to playing, playing normal uh, like it was before the injury. As you see, Dallas Goddard is like, look, 85, 90 percent. He's feeling good. Hopefully he can just go all in. And what better game to come back against the Cowboys, the team that hurt you? you know you want blood. So Dallas Goddard, can't wait to have you back because Jalen Hurts number with Dallas Goddard and without him. It's like drastically different because then you could go back to the tight end screens. Dallas Goddard is one hell of a blocker. And if he's feeling 90 percent, that's really good. Coming off a broken arm, basically feeling 90 percent. Yeah, it could be very productive because let's be honest, all the players are like 80, 90 percent. It's like week what of 12. So we towards that end of the mark where bodies getting banged up. It's not looking good. Um, yeah, man. Shout out to Dallas Goddard. It's coming back soon. And I said this was the last topic. I'm sorry. I almost forgot about this topic about Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts should be bench again, according to David Carr. But let me go ahead and play this clip. Station, if you're Philly, and you have to really say, is it better for us to play Marcus Mariota right now? and let Jalen get really? fully healthy. Ooh. Because I would argue that it does not matter if you're the number one seed. Because if the 49ers come into Philly yeah. again, they do not care. Yeah. They do not care. If it's raining in Philly, doesn't matter. But, but Irrelevant. You're the coach. You're Nick Sirianni. You go up to Jalen Hurts. He's oh, like, I'm dude, you, I, I, that's going to be a play, crazy coach. conversation. I can play. How are you going to tell me after I just got paid, we do all of this stuff, I'm in the MVP running. We just had a board up there agreeing oh, his MVP odds, and now you're going to tell me, tell me to sit. Big picture, brother. Like, that's like <laughs> you have to do. Like, if you're Nick Sirianni, this is the type of decision and conversation you have to have if you have a big picture mentality. And I think you can have that conversation honestly with Jalen. And if you set him down, that's all Jalen talks about. Mm -hmm. 
is the end result and yeah. getting to the Super Bowl and winning that thing. The best way we can do it, they didn't run the football at all no, with him. They, they twice? Did they did. That's not they it, did. man. That's not the winning edge. Put Marcus in there. Win a couple games. Yeah. Maybe you have the number one seed still. You might have it. Yeah. I'd say he's probably better playing quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh. Right now. Right now. Oh. He would be more productive. Hey, I ain't say right that. Now. Terrible take. Terrible take. I mean, one of the worst of the worst I heard saying that, well, if you want to make a playoff run, rest Jalen Hurts. So you're going to rest Jalen Hurts against the Cowboys. And we just lost to the 49ers. And we're trying to get first playoff seat. If Jalen Hurts need any rest, you want to beat them, win out your schedule, and get a get a break for the um, during the first seed. You know, you get that bye. Hell, wrap it up by, you know, the end of Christmas. Wrap this thing up. Maybe you beat the Cap. Beat the Cowboys, beat the Seahawks, beat the Giants, beat the Cardinals, and maybe that last Giants game don't mean anything. You get that break, and you get the following break. You get two weeks off, and then you can you know, handle who you got to handle that next game. But to say, oh, get the break now, no, absolutely, absolutely not with seeding on the line. Then he making it sound like Marcus Mariota is better. I had this argument with this dude on Twitter saying Marcus Mariota is better and that the Eagles had so much success with backup quarterbacks that Marcus Mariota should play over Jalen Hurts. Insane to me. Crazy to me. Crazy talk. But hey, man, this video went a lot longer than what I thought. I did not know I was going to stay on that Nick Sirianni thing. That was just, you know, a, a little rant. Little rant, but this is Eagle Al, man. I'm a